Hey everybody, this is Comics on TV. I'm Josh. And I'm Mike. And we're talking Gotham this week. The episode is Under the Knife. It was the second part of the three-part finale <laughs> event. That's what they should have pegged it as because it's a setup episode again, but, but not a bad one. But not, no Fish Mooney, of oh. course. God, she gets shot in the last episode, but let's not talk about I'm her. I'm really sad ever. who cares. Bruce and Selena, adorbs, yep. always, you know. Totes adorbs. Yeah. Because that's how I talk. Yeah, they're going around. Bruce is feeling kids. some kind of way about killing the one dude. Selena's like, I could give a rat's ass. He deserved it. It was him or us. They were going to come after you. Deal with it. Bruce's like, eh. So they find out in Wayne Industries there is a safe that they need to crack. And of course, law. of course, Selena being the thief that she is, she's got a plan they're gonna, and a dress. Yes, and we're going to go to the Wayne Enterprise Gala. <laughs> she's going to dress like Cindy Lauper from the 80s. <laughs> going to go with Bruce Wayne in his little monkey suit and try to get this It was from adorable the to watch them dance. It is. Damn it, guys. You know what? Look, here's the deal. They forgot the best line of the night. You guys need me for everything. All right? Here's the best line of the night. Selena Kyle and Bruce Wayne dancing at the ball, and she goes... Everyone's staring at us. And he goes, well, I am Bruce Wayne. That's your Jump Street Minute. Back to these guys. There's an interaction. And right he's trying right. to not to let Alfred know about things. Yeah. So he's saying, he goes, oh, I'm going to go. Well, yeah, maybe I do like her. Kind of like, he's like, he's like, oh, you feel feelings about it? That's quite all right, yeah. Master Bruce. But, and he said, Alfred, kudos to him, man. Getting better and stuff. Dude's like almost still dead. And he's like, can I get you anything? I'd be like, lay down. <laughs> Take a load off, dude. You got down. stabbed. This kid can self-sufficient. He's not an infant. Villains had their, you know, a lot going on this they week. They developed the villains. They developed, I mean, of course, Penguin. We always love him. Maroney is just straight up messing with him, and I love it. Pretty much just bitch slapped him <laughs> in the face. Like, you, like, he does that anyway most yeah, of the time. pretty but much. Right in front of his mom, he's like, he's <laughs> acting all nice. So I'm just hanging out with your mom. We're going to have a little vino, all this kind of stuff. And then he's like, you know what? Your son's a friggin' psychopath. And she's like, no, no. He kills me as a cold-blooded murderer. He's like, and he's just like, no, no, mom, I'm not. It's like when you got caught when you were a kid, you're like, really? So, and just to, just to twist the knife a little bit more, he sends flowers to her house. Yeah, and uh, of course, <laughs> Penguin doesn't like that. Yeah, delivery guy's like, oh, well, there was no tip involved in this. You he's know, like, here, you tell Maroney that I'm coming to kill him. He's like, better yet, I'll tell him. And, and he, he stabs him. him. Yeah, he, st <laughs> he stabs him with like glass in his neck. And it's like they say, don't shoot the messenger. They never say anything about not stabbing the messenger. So I guess that's where the translation yeah, falls. So, so that guy had a one episode story arc on Gotham. <laughs> yeah, <he's> like, <laughs> <laughs> and then you got Riddler. Oh my God. Riddler developing the story with him and, uh, and Kringle. Yeah. I mean, he really, really likes her. And she has a thing for and cops that are just terrible abusive. people. Abusive. And he's like, no, you are not doing that to her. He, you can see him transform. And yeah, just he's kinda... like, oh, what are you going to do about it kind of thing. But he's, she's getting beat. Yeah, he's what are you doing, Riddle Man? About that. What are you talking about, Riddle Man? What are you going to do, Riddle <laughs> they Man? They got the foreshadowing part of the episode where he's reenacting kind of like a, a, a stabbing on a watermelon. So he's getting, you see him getting into it kind of on it. So again, foreshadowing, when he comes up against this guy, sees him coming up to Kringle's house, confronts him, ends up stabbing dude in the stomach, and then... He just, he just likes it. He becomes he just more and more gleeful at what he's doing. He's got his go-go Riddler arm and sh just going and he's just like, wait a minute, I didn't know I was going to like stabbing people so much. He's like, and he, But you can see the emotion in his face. The, he does a great job of portraying this character. Because yes. you can see without saying anything, he gives you that, that subtle change from, hi, I'm kind of a nervous guy to something's about to happen kind the, of deal. The transformation of the Riddler in this season um, has been a subtle one, but a great one. But it has been a great one. Yeah. I mean, uh, the bigger picture, of course, you know, we the have ogre. the ogre, you know, Milo from freaking Heroes, now he's a villain, he's He's a got Barbara Keane now, well, he's, he, he's trying to get with her, but it's yeah. kind of like she's intriguing to him because she really doesn't have anyone, he doesn't realize she's away from Jim. She's a train wreck, and he kind of digs Yeah, it. and he's kind of like getting ready to kill her, and he's like, wait a minute. She's messed up kind of like me. We've got something in common. So he kind of lets it go. Jim Gordon's on the case. He's not going to take shit from the or from the ogre. Everybody oh, yeah, he knows even it. has a press he goes, conference. Yeah. He's like, screw you. He's like, this is what's going to go down. They find out who the ogre is. He goes, I don't care with you. Are you intimidating <laughs> other cops, but not me? And I'm like. They find out the ogre is the son of a butler for this rich woman who he killed a long time ago. They're living off the money of hers. Um, he indirect, oh, but going to Jim for a second, he does indirectly tell uh, Maggie you know, Thompson that he loves her. Yeah, he comes and up. And she's all like, oh, scares, you told me that you love me. Scares the shit out of her in their <laughs> apartment, gets hit upside the head with a phone, but yeah. you know what? Hey. Hey, but there's a little bit of love in the air. I don't know where the kids do that. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> oh, but, yeah. 
<laughs> so the ogres, you don't know how he feels about Barbara Keen at this point. You know, is he really intrigued by her? Is he really going to kill her? Probably. But you know what? It's not a bad episode. You should check it out. Comment at the bottom of the video. Yeah. Like uh, us on Facebook. Also go to Twitter at The Real Comic Wow. Yeah, go on Snapchat. Comic Wow Guys. See all the weird, stupid things we do sometime in our, in our downtime. Also go to our YouTube channel and our Vimeo as well. Please subscribe so you can get these videos and many, many more in your inbox. And go on ComicWow.com. That's what it's all about. Start your free profile. Interact with your friends. Get your news, updates, and everything. We'll see you on ComicWow.com.